hello everyone in this video we will be discussing about the shape function derivation for an axisymmetric element so for that we should be knowing what is the the shape function are also called as interpolation functions with respect to the fixed nodes for an axisymmetric element it is not compulsory you need to go with the same uh, example what i have cho chosen here you can go with uh, any axisymmetric element preferably a cylindrical tube if you are going with that means it will be easy to understand so this for this cylindrical tube i have uh, two things first one is nothing but the input and the output input is nothing but the nodal position and output is nothing but the deformation input you need to note it down note it down when we are doing the geometry that is uh, in the indicates what is the the total length of the pipe the diameter in case if it is having any hole or if any other uh, supporting parts so all those things will be called considered as the input and output uh, because of uh, any internal pressure developed or because of any external force which is applied on it whatever the deformation which is changing uh, with respect to the all the nodal position we call it as uh, the displacements uh, so that is nothing but our output so sometimes what happens uh, uh the deflections uh, or the deformation uh, value will be more uh not on the nodes in between the nodes so for finding uh, such values only we are depending on uh, this shape function equations we'll just discuss how to uh, derive that shape function equations for the axisymmetric elements so generally we know uh, for uh, any uh, three node triangular element what is the shape function equations Uh, with respect to the Cartesian coordinates, already we have discussed in the module two. So, time being, uh, I'll be adopting the shape function equations as it is. Uh, uh, what I have derived for the three-node triangular element, so three nodes. So, for node I, node J, and node M, I'll be denoting it as N I, N J, and N M. Uh, the equations are for node I, it is one by two A alpha I plus beta I R plus gamma I Z. For N J, it is one by two A. Alpha j plus beta j r plus uh, uh, gamma j z, and for n m, it is one by two f alpha m plus beta m r plus gamma m z. The shape function equations. Uh. So maybe if you are referring some other textbooks or some other notebooks, means where uh, the my major changes, uh, what you could observe in the shape function equations are being but uh, where instead of this uh, i j uh, r, uh, they would have gone with uh, some other uh, notations. That's all. So here I'll be going with i j and gamma. uh some people they go with a, a pq or r m n o p like that they will go so that is not a problem the important thing is the equation only so next one is something is a general displacement function uh since it is a, a three node triangular element the general displacement function i need to define along both x and y axis that deflection i'll be denoting it as u and w so u and w both is with respect to r and z that is nothing but the radial displacement and even nothing but uh, Uh, the horizontal longitudinal displacement so this u and w uh, in the matrix form if i want to write it down means it is uh, n i 0 n j 0 n m 0 and similarly for w it is 0 n i 0 n j and 0 n m so in the matrix we will be getting u i w i u j w j u m and w m the short form we can write it as uh, psi which is equal to the shape function uh, matrix equation into the displacement function that is d matrix next is step 3 here we need to define the strain displacement and the stress strain relationships so the strain relationships are the strain displacement equation how to write down here we'll just have a look already we discussed this uh, in the uh, stiffness matrix derivation the same thing as it is i'll be adopting so strain thing i'll be denoting it as uh, a2 by a6 and second equation is a by r that is a1 by r plus a2 plus a3 z by r and third is nothing but a3 plus a5 and uh, stress strain relationship it is 0 1 0 0 0 0 so it is basically a 6 cross 6 matrix why three nodes each node is having two degrees of freedom the order should be 3 to 2 6 cross 6 and the second row it is 0 0 0 0 0 1 and the third row 1 by r 
1 z by r 0 0 0 and the last row it is 0 0 1 0 1 0 sorry it is 4 cross 6 matrix we will be getting maybe in the end we will be getting 6 cross 6 so a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 is a polynomial coefficient sir. so these particular thing uh, even we can write it in the short form so how i will be writing it as bi bj and bm so in that way i will be writing it as and uh, this one i am talking about and uh, the, dis uh, the displacement sir ui wi uj wj and um wm so this one in the extended form we will be getting like this we will be getting and coming to the strain and the stressors strain is always a uh, b matrix into d matrix that is the displacement matrix into the normal uh, uh, deflection so the b is nothing but b i b j b m and moving to the stress it is d matrix into b matrix into d matrix and step four so derive the element stiffness matrix and the equations the element stiffness matrix since it is having three axes so three integral notation with respect to the volume b so we will be getting it as b transpose into d into b matrix into db that is with respect to the volume next if I want to remove one matrix that is the area the volume will be replaced as area so it is 2 pi we will be getting b transpose db r d r d is z and next one if you want to remove these two integration that is the area so finally we will be getting the stiffness matrix as 2 pi r a into b transpose into d into b and the centroid point of the element that is r even it is denoted as r dash or similarly z it is called as z dash the formula is r i plus r j plus r m by 3 and z is z i plus z j plus z m by 3 we have two more forces particularly the asymmetric element that is surface forces and the body forces that is on the surface the force if it is acting means what is the formula we have to use that this denoted as fi equal to 2 pi rj zm minus zj by 2 into the matrix 0 0 pr pz then again pr pz then for the body force so from the body with respect to the axis r and z if the force is acting means what is the formula so the body force is denoted as fb which is equal to 2 pi f a by 3 this f indicates exact body force and in the matrix you will be getting capital rb zb capital rb zb capital rb zb even the short form we can write it as where the rb as omega square rho into gamma this is nothing but acceleration due to gravity the density and even the angular viscosity so the example for the shape function you can take anything the bulb or else the drilling platform anything you can take it maybe the single bit or in the multiple bits you can able to see here for everything we can go with the same the concept of shape functions starting from the platform and even uh, the number of uh, drill bits uh, columns and finally the drill you can able to see this and bulb is the very simple example so with this this derivation gets completed and this shape function derivation for an asymmetric element is actually important in the exam point of view so go through this derivation step by step if any doubt post your doubts in the comment section thank you